Hey guys, welcome back to the Rock, Rockford Ordnance. We're here tonight bringing you a video on our AR-10 build. We put this rifle together ooh, a few episodes back and just wanted to give you an update, first of all, how it's running. Second of all, we failed to tell you about a very interesting part of this rifle and that's its buffer system and its stock system. It's very unique compared to most. It's very misunderstood and we're gonna go over a little bit about it. So uh, before we do, uh, you know, I kind of coined the term uh, coffee and Kalashnikovs for a few of our little get togethers here. And I'm watching some other videos and they all got uh, sponsors for different drinks uh, and different alcoholic drinks. Yeah, they may or may not fit with uh, firearms, but I guess after the fun, you know, you could partake a little bit. But uh, I thought, man, with as much as I love coffee and coffee and Kalashnikovs being so cool, sure it would be nice to have a coffee sponsor. Don't know, maybe one will pick us up, we'll see. Anyhow, having a little coffee here. Uh, we shot this rifle this weekend, had a friend come out, good friend of mine and uh, we had some fun with it. He really liked it and I forgot all about our buffer system here so we're going to tell you about it. Before we do, please make sure you check out our Facebook page and our Instagram. Also, check out Rockford Ordnance at Patreon. If you join up for as little as a dollar a month, uh, you'll get some really neat uh, Oh, swag, so to speak. So check it out and uh, give the channel a hand so we can keep bringing you some great stuff. Enough of that. On to the rifle. Let's uh, go through this a little bit. Uh, so, I'm not going to bore you with the details of what went into this. Uh, if you do want to know a little more about it, there's a couple videos we have out already. You can go out and check those out. But, uh, we built this on an aero platform and originally I was going to build this as a rifle, uh, more of a precision thing. We we're going to go either 18 or 20 inch uh, barrel and then I thought, you know, for the first AR-10 I really want it to be kind of an all-around rifle. I thought, let's build this thing as a carbine. So we built it uh, as a carbine with a 16 inch barrel uh, plus the muzzle brake. And I got to thinking, I really liked that look of a precision stock on here, like the PRS, but uh, it really didn't fit. And then I came across this, it's called the UBR. It's a really awesome stock system from Magpul in that it's got a unique look, more like a, a rifle stock, a solid stock. And I thought on this rifle it would be cool and it would be cool to make it look more like a battle rifle, right? As opposed to uh, the word we all love, assault weapon or, or carbine or however you want to call it. But I thought that look would be really cool and I came across this. So let's talk about the stock first and foremost, then we'll get into the important stuff, the buffer. So it looks like a solid stock right now and uh, when you have an M4 you know you hit the the button you slide the whole stock back well this is kind of neat in that when you hit the button it's got all the adjustments that's one two three four five six seven eight including the full in a uh, lot of adjustment and what's neat about it is it when you adjust the length of pull on it your cheek rest remains in the same spot it's not sliding back with it so you don't have to be on the tube uh, a lot of good things. Your beard won't catch in it, all kinds of cool stuff. So it gives you a consistent cheek weld no matter where the length of pull is set. One other cool thing about this, when you adjust it, you can, let's say you're in a vehicle and you have it fully uh, retracted or all the way collapsed, you can hit the button, pull it out, and depending where you set it, you can have it only go to that specific point all the time by setting basically a, a kind of a set screw system in there. And they're numbered here, what positions, and you can set it to that. Now I don't because a lot of different people are shooting this rifle and they may want to adjust it. So we haven't done that. Um, maybe when the shine's worn off this and not as many people are messing with it, I will set it for me. Um, but it's got plenty of positions. 
And you say, well, you know, why did this stock come into play first of all? It wasn't so much the stock as it was the buffer system. Now I gotta clarify one thing because there'll be some confusion out there. Um, there's, there's a lot of confusion when it comes to this buffer system. So this stock uh, is the Mod 2, uh, Gen 2 version of it. The first one only accepted uh, carbine uh, buffer tubes and springs and buffers. This Mod 2 was built a little different. There's a spacer in there so you can still run carbines, but you can run the A5 buffer system. Now the A5 buffer system was developed by a company by the name of, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, Valator or Velator or something like that, V-L-A-T-O-R, Velator, let's say. And they developed what's called the A5 buffer system. Now why did they develop the A5 buffer system? Well, there was a specific need that needed to be met. The A5 buffer uh, tube or receiver extension, as it's also known, falls in between a carbine buffer tube and a rifle buffer tube. It's about an inch or so longer than the carbine buffer tube and shorter than a rifle buffer tube. And you say, well, you know, we, we've got the carbine and the rifle, what do we need another one for? Well, back in the early 2000s, uh, the Marines actually were trying to solve a problem and maybe you guys will catch it here. I'll, I'm going to show you something. Uh, you've probably all seen pictures of Marines generally because they used the full-length rifle uh, stock uh, prior to uh, taking up the M4 platform and you would see tons of pictures of them with the rifle perched way up high like this, right? It's not on the shoulder. Um, it's not in, you know, that pocket. They're shooting it and it's barely on their shoulder up here, you know, barely hanging on. And for guys that don't know or weren't in the service, they may not know what, you know, is that the way they're taught to shoot? Is that the way I'm supposed to do it? You'll see some new guys at the range and they got that sucker perched way up there like that. There may be some guys that were taught to shoot that way and think, well, that's the way it's supposed to be. It's not. So what happened uh, is the rifle, fixed rifle stock is a rather long length of pull. And when you've got some guys or gals of shorter stature and the advent of body armor comes around where it's getting really thick up here, right? They just can't get that length of pull short enough to where the uh, eye relief on their ACOGs is right. So to get the right eye relief, they had to perch it way up above so it's not uh, hitting their body armor and giving them effectively a shorter length of pull. Because when they ran the ACOGs all the way forward with a backup sight behind it, they just couldn't get close enough to it. So the, to solve the problem, they ran it way up here which would allow them to get closer to it. So it was a fix for a problem and kind of a crappy fix, right? That's not a very good weld at all. So the Marines were looking for a fix for it and uh, Velotter, however you pronounce it, came to the rescue. What they did was totally reinvent the system. They went to the, uh, a, the A5 buffer tube, a little bit shorter than the rifle and it also allowed the use of a standard M4 collapsible stock. Therefore, not only did it shorten it, but they could adjust it as well. So all the way in with the M5 buffer tube, A5 buffer tube, uh, it would give them about two and a half inches shorter length of pull than standard rifle stock. Um, the Marines used it for a while, adopt it, we're gonna adopt it, and then decided on the M4 platform. So it's essentially a version of the M16 that was never to be. So that's how it got started. Anyhow, uh, this company kept on going with it and discovered a few things along the line. Number one, uh, the reason the Marines wanted to stay with the rifle link system is its reliability, right? Well, this kept all the reliability, accuracy, performance, all those good things. It also slows the cyclic rate a little bit and uh, also reduces felt recoil. So it was a win all the way around. 
So uh, Velotter came out with it and originally for the AR platform and a lot of guys found that with it slowing the uh, cycle rate, slowing that buffer down, uh, preventing bolt bounce, all kinds of good stuff. And the recoil was much, much less. Just a great system. For those of you that haven't tried it, you gotta try it. It's really nice. Um, a couple guys may not like the impulse on it, the recoil impulse, but uh, most guys I think will find it uh, very nice, pleasant, well shooting and, and reliable. This gun, by the way, since we set everything up, uh, you got the, the gas valve done and everything, it has been incredibly reliable. We, it hasn't missed a beat, not one. Um, so let's get into it. How does that um, A5 buffer tube come into play with this Magpul UBR stock? Well, the UBR stock is a system. It comes standard with that A5 length buffer tube built into it. Uh, if you don't want to use that longer length, it comes with a spacer. You leave that spacer in, you can run a standard carbine length buffer and buffer spring. Now, that's all well and good. That's, we're talking about an AR-15, now we got an AR-10. So, even better, right? I want to slow this, uh, uh, not slow it down, but I want to soften up the recoil. So I thought, why not take advantage of this? It, it looks cool, it looks kind of like a fixed stock like I want. Uh, but has all the advantages of an adjustable stock and I can make it recoil less. So I'm reading all about it and there's so much confusion out there. Guys are saying, well, you can use, you know, this buffer with this buffer spring and all these different things and so much bad information out there. Um, to top it off, Magpul's first generation of this stock did not allow uh, for the A5 buffer system. It was only set up for carbine buffer systems. So, Gen 2, which most of you guys are gonna come across if you're buying a new one now, uh, will take that A5 buffer tube. Like I said, about an inch longer. It's already incorporated in it. The stock is a little pricey, but you gotta remember, it comes with the buffer tube already. It comes with the end plate, comes with uh, what essentially is a castle nut. It's a little more complicated when you put it together, but uh, you know, you've got your uh, single point sling here, quick detach, ready to go. Comes with all these great things. There's storage. So the price really isn't uh, that big a deal and it is rock solid. This is probably the most, uh, incredibly built stock that Magpul makes. This thing is just sturdy. Everything about it, the lockup, it's just a great stock. You're not gonna break it. It's their premier stock, put it that way. So let's get into how I was gonna use it on here. I'm reading about what buffer weight to use. Now, when they sold this thing for use in M16s, AR15s, there were a bunch of different uh, buffer weights that they offered to kind of fine tune it. And they started at about 3.6 ounces and went up to 5 point something, I don't know, 5.6, 5.8. Uh, guys were recommending if I was running a regular carbine buffer, you know, to go with like an H3 or something like that. And then I got to reading and everybody said, you gotta get in contact with this guy at Heavy Buffers. And it's heavybuffers.com. And the gentleman there that owns it is just a wealth of knowledge. There's a chart on his website explaining a lot of this. Uh, believe it or not, I run a 10 plus ounce buffer in this thing. It's like 10.1, 10.3, something like that. And a standard rifle length uh, buffer spring. And together it is exceptionally soft recoiling. It is reliable as heck and uh, it, it's just wonderful, the recoil, everything. We whipped this thing out uh, yesterday and first six rounds out of it were all touching one ragged hole. My buddy couldn't believe it. And with the soft recoil, just crazy. So I'm gonna show you this buffer real quick. So keep in mind, this thing is about an inch longer than a regular carbine tube and so is the buffer. If I can get it out of here while holding it in a precarious position here. Give me just a sec, guys. 
There we go. Out of here. All right. So, like I said, comes with everything in the kit, ready to go. And let me show you this buffer. So, standard length uh, rifle spring. And here is your buffer. Now, this thing is a load. Over 10 ounces, all stainless steel with tungsten weights, beautifully machined and uh, just works great this thing is built to last forever it's marked xh that's extra heavy and uh yeah right on it it says heavybuffers.com i believe and just a super super nice piece so you say 10.5 how the heck is that going to work is it going to slow it down it does slow it down a hair but the 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 advantages uh of that soft recoil no bolt bounce, uh, reliability, all of those things just come together to work fabulously with this stock. Um, are there other ones out there? There may be a couple other manufacturers doing that length uh, buffer tube to run uh, with a regular stock. And you can purchase that buffer tube from Vlader or Velator or whatever it is uh, as just a buffer tube and run whatever stock you want. But uh, yeah, this is... Uh, what I decided on and I was skeptical no doubt I was skeptical I was gonna go with like a uh, h3 uh, with the carbine um, spring in there and leave the spacer in here and then I thought why not take advantage of what I have here and my bet has paid off incredibly well it is just a magnificent way to go I thought I would share that with you today um, hopefully clear up a little of the confusion. Again, guys, that confusion comes from Magpul having two generations of this thing and the first one not accepting the uh, A5 buffer tube or not having it. And then the second generation being able to run both and the spacer and guys thinking, well, I can run a carbine, um, AR-10 buffer with a standard AR-15 spring and all this craziness. Keep it all simple. Go to his website, check out the chart, send him an email, call him. Really helpful. He'll tell you what you need. Um, it just works. I couldn't ask for better. I hear some nightmares about guys getting these things, trying to run them and trying to jump between all kinds of different fixes. Well, this didn't need a fix. It ran right out of the box fabulously. And yeah, nice and heavy oil oh, boy. Spring too. But it's a standard spring. That's a nice thing too. Spring wears out. You can get a standard spring, throw it in, done. Anyhow, thought I'd bring that to you. Thought I would explain a little bit about the A5 buffer system and hopefully get rid of uh, some of the misnomers out there. If you guys have any questions on it, want to know how it'll work in your gun, will it fit, will it work with different combinations, post the questions down below. I will answer them. I answer every question ever put to this uh, YouTube channel. Um, yeah, that's what I wanted to bring you today. And uh, get out there, guys. Build yourself an AR-10 and have some fun. This Aero Precision has been wonderful. So much fun to shoot. So accurate. We were shooting that with my hand loads yesterday. 168 grains, uh, BLC2 powder, and uh, just killing it. I think about 46 grains. And, uh, man, unbelievable. We still have this cheapy... Crossfire 2 scope on here. Um, I am going to go to a primary arms uh, three power prism, fixed power prism scope with the ACSS reticle. That's going to be the scope we go with on this. Um, this one I got cheap and just put on here for now. It has had one issue. I mentioned it in the other video. I guess I'll tell you guys about it now. Uh, AR-10s can be kind of rough on scopes at times, just recoil and whatnot. Now, while the recoil is softer on this, the little contact inside the battery compartment uh, broke off its little solder points um, right away. I mean, a few shots and all of a sudden it was the 
red dot in the center of it was going dead and I'm like what the heck I take it apart and the little contact had broken off so I kind of just laid the contact in there put the battery on put the cap on tight it's been holding it's been lasting but it's got to go back to Vortex to be fixed now $199 scope uh, I don't know you know it, it's about as entry level as you get should I expect it to work probably I mean the, the recoil is not bad on this thing and uh, to tell you the truth, maybe it wasn't even a recoil. It happened so quick, I mean, within a couple shots, uh, that maybe it was just not uh, soldered right from the factory or whatever. But got to get it back to them, get it fixed, and we'll put it on something else. Because, hey, it's a couple hundred bucks plus the mount and everything. You know, I got 300 bucks wrapped up in that thing, so we'll get it working. But uh, I can't wait for that primary arms to come in. It's so useful on our NPAP. Uh, that's my kind of everyday go-to and with this being a carbine not really looking to reach out uh, too crazy far uh, I think it'll be really nice I thought about the five power but then that's kind of eh for CQB and two eyes uh, two eyes open on a three power is not a big deal works out pretty good so uh, kicked around a one by six but uh, just length and taking up rail space and uh, weight and all I just think that that prism scope is going to be the great solution for this thing and we'll be done uh, can't say enough about this rifle next thing we're going to bring you is a video on this muzzle brake uh, just a great muzzle brake from Faxon uh, don't have to time it times itself really cool we'll bring you that in the next video so again guys please check out our Instagram check out our Facebook check out our Patreon please 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 and as always, Rockford Ordnance out.